Hello, everybody. In just a few minutes here to walk through the uh, the final paper, final essay assignment, um, which will be due at the very end of, of the course. You can find the due date and time uh, and the place to upload the folder in the, um, the essay assignment folder, which is under weekly assignments, um, which if you're watching this video, you've already found it. All right. So um, what I have up on the screen here is the paper prompt, again, which you can find in the in that same folder. And so what I'd like you to do for this final essay is, I have, as I have written here, choose one of the living religions we studied over the course of the semester. And that can be ones that we've already covered or have yet to cover in these last uh, uh, couple of weeks. And then from that religion, whatever you choose, be Islam, Judaism, Hinduism, whatever, <clears throat> you're going to select one myth, narrative, or legend that's considered sacred to that uh, religion. And again, it's wide open. Choose whatever, as long as it's embedded in that the, the religion that you choose. And then two, you'll um, choose a particular temple, synagogue, mosque, church, sacred place, some kind of architecture, some kind of specific uh, architecture. And when I say specific, I mean specific. And so not just choose, you know, a generic temple or synagogue, a specific temple from... New York City or Jerusalem or um, Riyadh or Mecca, whatever. You're going to choose one very specific um, place. And then three, you're going to choose one specific artifact or artwork that's sacred to that religion or which expresses uh, particular aspects of that religion. All right. So all of these will be from the one religion that you choose. So I, I, I have an example here. So say you chose Judaism. One way you might go is uh, you might choose the story of Abraham and Isaac. Um, and the near sacrifice of Isaac by his father Abraham from the book of Genesis. Uh, you might choose the temple Emmanuel, um, the largest synagogue in New York City. And for an artifact, you might choose the shofar, which is the, the ram's horn that was used in sacred uh, Judaic uh, ritual. Um, but again, it's, it's really wide open to what you want to choose. And then what I want to do, what I would like you to do in your essay is... Um, is to structure your essay around those three parts. And so I have some guide questions here you might consider as you explore the myth, uh, the architecture, the, the sacred uh, place, or the artifact here. And again, don't feel that you need to answer all of these questions. It's not really a checklist. This is really what, um, just to kind of get you thinking uh, along these lines and give you some ideas of where to start from when analyzing these kinds of things. So, you know, with your, your narrative, you know, briefly summarize the narrative. Where, is, where does it come from? How does the story reflect core aspects, at least of your chosen religion? You know, why is this story Judaic or Islamic or Hindu? Um, do we find similar stories in other religions? So <clears throat> use your best judgment. Uh, choose the questions. Use the approach which interests you uh, the most. And you can, I'm not going to bother. You can read these questions for, for yourself. So the idea is, um, in terms of kind of specifics, um, I'm thinking of, you know, kind of an eight to 10 page paper, double space, 12 point font. Um, so, you know, shoot for, for each of your sections, I would say aim for three pages per section. And that should kind of put you in the ballpark of what I'm, I'm looking for. Um, here are some specifics. Uh, give your paper a separate, separate title page. And then your first page of text uh, should begin at the top of the first page after the title page. You know, the title page does not count in terms of, um, the, the page count, now there is a bibliography. When I have the page count, this is for your written analysis. Um, your title page must, must include uh, a creative engaging title, your name, uh, the name of the class, my name, the date, uh, primary and secondary sources uh, should be properly cited on a separate bibliogra bibliography page at the end of your paper. Again, this does not count towards uh, this page count here. Um, and then here, very important, I'd like you to consult at least two secondary scholarly sources having to do with one of the, the uh, one or more of the um, artifacts, you know, myth or, or architecture that you that you've chosen. Um, and when I mean scholarly sources, I mean, these are these are things that you would find in a book or in a journal, not just stuff you kind of find loosely published on the web. So I, please do not cite Wikipedia. I love Wikipedia, but it's it's not a it's not recognized as a legitimate scholarly source. And so um, a scholarly source is going to be something that you're going to find that's been published, that's been reviewed by scholars, that's kind of past a level of expertise uh, in a ways that you tend not to find in just kind of loose web sources. Um, uh, more on that in just a second. So each page must be numbered. Um, if, if, this is not required, but if you, um, uh, if you want to, it's very helpful to me. 
if you choose, if you on a page or two put some images of the artifact or the temple or the synagogue or or, or mosque that you choose, um, and you can put that uh, right before your bibliography. Um, and again, title page appendices bibliography don't count towards uh, required page length. Now, as far as finding secondary sources, there's lots of there's lots of um, help out there through GRCC GRCC's library website. I have some links here that are searchable. Um, by keyword uh, for you know whatever your your um, your artifact you know myth might be, uh, and will lead you usually to PDFs that you can just download uh, for free on your com computer as long as you're signed in um, with your GRCC credentials. Um, other things here, but let me take you to the the course Blackboard site where I have these things in a more immediate fashion. So you see on this link on the top left here called Research Resources. If you click on that, this takes you all of these links here, um, really except for the last one here. Um, will be searchable databases, which will lead you to legitimate scholarly sources. Anything you find on any of these sources has passed that level of expertise, and you can include that in the bibliography without you know, wondering, is this a legitimate um, source uh, or, or not? And so I think uh, between these five, you should be able to find pretty much anything that you're looking for. Uh, it might take some whittling down, depending on kind of how um, maybe obscure the, the, the topic that you've chosen. If you need help, I'm pretty good at tracking things down, so just let me know, and I'm happy to, to help you in this way. This last link here um, is a link from Calvin University just down the road, uh, and it, it's uh, for if, you, if you're not clear on, on um, how to cite your paper uh, in your bibliography, uh, click on this link here, and here you can just you can choose whatever uh, format, your style that you've chosen, MLA, APA, Chicago. Those are kind of the three big academic um uh, scholarly formats. I don't care which one you choose as long as you're consistent throughout your, your paper. So you choose your citation style. You just plug in all the information from your source, whether it's an article or a book or whatever. Hit submit and it'll it'll spit out something you can just simply copy and paste into your bibliography and it'll be the right uh, format. All right, so let me know if you have questions. If you need help along the way, uh, don't hesitate to ask um, and I look forward to hearing from you soon.